Hello learners, I am Mohini Arora and I welcome you to this session on operating systems which is for the students of computer science course. In this session, we will be covering about operating systems, about types of operating systems. So, let us begin the session. I hope you will learn, you will enjoy this session and it will be a gaining experience for you. So, we begin with objectives of this session. In this session, we will be defining an operating system, we will be listing the functions of an operating system and we will be classifying the operating system into various types. So, first of all, what is an operating system? As you all know, it is a software, an operating system is a software. It is a software which forms an interface between the user and the computer. It mediates between you when you work on the computer and up between the hardware of the computer. So, it controls the allocation of resources, it controls the memory management of the computer. Any command that you give to the computer, then that is first accessed by the operating system and then the respective functioning takes place whether the output is to be given or whether the memory has to be allocated or any peripheral device has to be given any instructions all such things are managed by the operating system. So, let us see the main functions of the operating system. Uh, we have listed out 4 5 functions first one is the process management. Now, a process is a program, a task that is in execution state like I give a command and that command is being executed by the computer. So, that execution time is the process that is being undertaken by the computer. So, operating system is responsible for creation, deletion and scheduling of various processes that are being given to the computer by you as a user. At any point of time, a single process might be running on the system or multiple processes might be running on the system. Next function that we are, we will be discussing is memory management. Memory management, your computers is meant to store data. So, to store any type of data, memory has to be allocated to the computer. So, the operating system keeps track of every memory location that is either assigned to the computer or that is to be used by any of the devices for any job completion uh, by the computer. It also checks how much memory should be assigned to each process for its successful completion. We move on to the next function of the operating system that is the input output management. A computer consists of input and output devices, we have done that, you know that, that there are various devices connected to the computer. So, the operating system manages the input and output process of the computer as well. It responds to the user keystrokes, mouse clicks and other input formats. It may be in the form of touch screen or audio or video or images. Any input that is given to the computer is being taken care of by the operating system for processing purposes. The operating system also interprets any input output requests that are requested so that adequate functions could be performed by the computer. So, the third function of the operating system is input output management of the computer. Next file and disk management. Any information that you want to store on the computer is stored in the form of files. So, any file has to be allocated memory on the computer. So, operating system is responsible for allocating spaces for files on secondary storage media. I want to store my file on a CD, on a hard disk, on any other storage media. So, the operating system takes care of that. Then next, if the file is of large size, then it has to be broken down into small, small fragments. So, keeping the track of those fragments, where those fragments are being stored, which fragment is being brought to the primary memory for the active reading, all these things are also managed by the operating system. 
if the file is of smaller size then it is stored in a contiguous fashion but if a file is of larger size then it has to be broken down into small fragments and then each fragment has to be processed according to the job that is to be performed so this file and disk management is also controlled by the operating system next we move on to user interface as i discussed before that an operating system is an interface that acts between you and your computer and your hardware so there are two types of user interfaces one is text user interface or command line interface and another is the graphical user interface if i talk about the text user interface it is a pure text you must have seen some systems or some old systems where you type in the command every command has to be typed it's a, a on the command prompt and then according to the command that you give to the computer and press enter key then the respective process the respective task is performed so that is the text user interface the means of input is only the keyboard the text moving on to graphical user interface windows where i can give the input through the keyboard through the mouse and nowadays there are other devices also through the scanner through the touch screen through the joystick so it forms an environment that is more user friendly to work with so that is the graphic user interface if i talk about examples then your dos your unix is a cli or a text user interface whereas your windows your linux your open office operating systems these are the graphical user interface so this slide uh, compares the text user interface versus the graphic user interface obviously text user interface is difficult to use as the commands have to be remembered to be typed in and if there is some error in the command then the respective command will not be executed on the other hand a graphic user interface is easy to use next the slide talks about control a text user interface has more control over the operating system as compared to the uh, graphic user interface in fact in case of graphic user interface for performing certain advanced functions you still need the command line you still have to go to the dos prompt to type few command for example pinging you have to go to the command prompt to ping and give that particular command so the more control on the operating system is by the text user interface then we have compared on the basis of resources your text user interface requires very few resources because the input is only through the keyboard whereas the graphic user interface requires number of resources you need the keyboard for text input the mouse for clicking you have also have the option of scanning an image or recording an audio or a video so different resources are required in case of graphic user interface than in case of text user interface and the examples that are given on your slide unix and dos are examples of text user interface whereas windows macintosh linux all these are examples of graphic user interface next we move on to types of operating system in this uh, session we have covered microsoft windows we have covered unix linux and smartphone operating systems we start with microsoft windows operating system as discussed before microsoft windows operating system is a graphic user interface that means it has a environment with through which we can give input in various forms in form of text using keyboard in form of mouse using clicking or in form of audio or video so and several programs can be opened at the same time you must have used windows operating system where i can work on ms word minimize that and i can play a song also side by side i can uh, open an excel spreadsheet or a windows explorer program so it supports multi programming and multitasking you can hear to the song in the background and keep on working on your presentation or your word document that is what is microsoft windows a very very popular operating system since decades launched by microsoft moving on to linux 
Linux is an open source operating system. When I talk about open source operating system, that means I am also given the code of the operating system to modify or distribute or uh, edit it. So, it becomes more uh, approachable to me as a user. I can use it as in the manner I want. So, Linux is uh, falls in the category of operating systems which is openly available, freely available and it is one of the first operating systems that was the open source operating systems available. It provides two types of graphic user interface, one is called KDE, another is called Genome. Both are available, you may use it, you may as per your requirement, you may choose any of the GUIs and you can work on that. We talk about now the three main components of Linux. It has three main components, kernel, system library and system utility. Kernel is the core part of the Linux. It has the commands, it has got the functioning which helps in major activities of the operating system. So, we can say that it is the brain, it is the core of the operating system, Linux operating system. It has got certain features which can be accessed by the system library, the second component of Linux. The system library has special functions using which the key features of the kernel can be accessed. And talking about the third component of Linux, the system utility, this particular component is responsible for performing specialized tasks that are to be performed by the operating system. So, these are the three main components of Linux operating system. Then we talk about Unix, text user interface operating system which is a very strong operating system is Linux which is used to perform multiple tasks, multiple processes at the same point of time. It is a multi-user operating system. It can be used for servers, for desktops, for laptops. In fact, Linux is the advanced version of Unix only. So, Unix has built-in security and permission features that even better than what Windows has. And the popular versions of Unix are Sun Solaris and Mac OS X which can work on Unix. Then we move on smartphone operating system. These days we are quite used to the smartphone operating systems. Each of us have seen a smartphone. A smartphone is one which is having the internet facility along with it. So, three types of operating system are discussed here as far as the smartphones are concerned. One is the iOS, second is the Android and third is the Windows phone. So, we take them one by one. iOS operating system is by Apple Incorporation and it is a multi-touch, multitasking operating system. It runs on all Apple devices, Apple iPhone, Apple iPad, Apple iPod. And it comes with a Safari web browser. You must have seen the Safari web browser for internet access. It has iTunes app for music and mail app for accessing emails. These are very few features that the iOS operating system has. There are many, many more features available nowadays. As the version of the operating system increases, the, the features also keep on increasing. So, we have just briefed about simple uh, features that the iOS has. Next, we move on to Android operating system. Android operating system is owned by Google and it is available on various uh, devices, various mobile phones. It has millions of free apps available. Android even has a platform, a free platform for developing apps. If you want to develop your app, you can develop on the Android platform and test it. It is one of the most commonly used operating systems that you can see on various smartphones. Various companies are taking Android operating system for their smartphones. So, it is a very, very popular uh, smartphone operating systems that we see today. Next, we move on to Windows Phone. As Windows, you must have seen as an operating system on the desktop, on the laptop. But same uh, interface Windows has tried to create for the smartphones, for the mobile phones also. 
as on desktop we have a tiled interface similarly on windows phone operating system also it has a tiled interface it has home screen resembles the windows desktop and it comes with internet explorer as the browser in the same manner as you see on your desktop and it comes with microsoft exchange for secure emails that you can access through your smartphones again these are very few features listed here it has got many more features available there are other apps that you can run on windows operating system so that is what is a windows operating system so this brings us to the end of this session and in this session we have learnt about the operating system what is an operating system we have learnt about different functions performed by the operating system it is file management process management memory management input output management so all these functions are performed by the operating system you need to have an operating system before installing any other software on your computer the first thing that you need to install is the operating system it forms the base the platform on which other applications can run and finally we talked about different types of operating system we talked about windows we talked about unix linux and smartphone operating system in smartphone operating system we discussed about ios about android and about windows phone i hope Uh, this session was a learning experience for you and you gained knowledge on operating system thank you